when you're ready. Action. Action. So most people say, hey, you want to go see my trophy room? I'm going to say, hey, you want to come see my trophy shed? <laughs> come on, guys. This is pretty cool. Sold a big house on the lake and looking for a piece of property. And uh, my father ended up moving to Arizona. So we had his house that we paid for and the property. And that's like, well, we'll just throw the shed together because the kids were had a little swimming pool they were swimming in and somewhere to change. So it's kind of just some of the stuff that I remember about it. You know, the, the Elvis trophies from Memphis. Um, some championship rings, uh, some races with Kevin Harvick and Jack Sprague. I and mean, we got a lot, we got a lot of stuff around here. So just something we enjoy. I mean, if it wasn't for your beautiful wife, as they say, you wouldn't be able to do this. Cause when we got married at 20, I was working on people's race cars. She says, why don't you build your own race car instead of work on them? So that's where it started. A lot of people didn't know that. <clears throat> Her dad and my dad raced against each other and were rivals. They hated each other. We got married. It took them 17 years to figure that out. <laughs> so they even talked. So. Wow, I didn't know that. That's well, awesome. VFW was probably one of the coolest. I got an opportunity to go to Iraq with NASCAR and uh, really see what the military does. Because CNN, TNN, whatever you want to watch on TV does not do what a military justice. So I go out of my way when I see a police officer and uh, I'll introduce you to Travis. He's down there working on his race car right now. It, it's so special to see what those guys do. So I go out of my way to thank them and honor what they do for us. Got a lot of helmets in here. Is there like any kind of chronological order to the pictures? Well, or? not really, but I mean, this is like my mom and my first race car I bought. And then I got my kids' race cars there and my, my daughter's dragster. And these are just early photos. You know, my lake house back here when they did a magazine article on it. So. You know, when you, you get rid of the big house and quit buying the beer and the steak, you got no more friends. So this is this is what we have now. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is probably one of the coolest, not the coolest thing. This brake pedal, they drove a hole in it right here for a return spring. It was the first lap at Watkins Glen. I went down into turn 10 and hit fourth gear, so you gotta probably run 160 to 175 and it broke the brake pedal and you can see where it flipped over the fence, hit the catch fence and landed on the wall. So Earnhardt said, why'd you guys cut the truck apart? And then he's seen the pictures of it. And so um, we had a truck that I've always wanted them to run, a Hutchin and Pagan truck. And Ron and Dick Hutchinson were good friends of mine. They helped me out in California when it came. So we never can get it to run right. So we always use it for a show truck, but we took it for a backup truck there and I ended up finishing fifth. So. Pretty special to wreck, wreck one and start in the back of the, the pack and still finish fifth. Whose truck was were you using? The other Arts. I mean, like the the chassis builder. Uh, Hopkins and the the, the main rod. Um, what am I thinking of? Um, um, Hutchin and Pagan. Yeah. Huh. The moral of the story is don't drill any holes in your pedals that didn't yeah, come well, that we, way. Yeah, we made a new rule. That's that's a cast aluminum pedal. Now they're all steel and reinforced and everything. Huh. It's pretty cool that we got, you can't really see it, but I got a picture of my dad down here, my wife, and my mom. And then I got the kids over here. So, and I do have a Martinsville clock up in the house. How did your daughter get into drag racing? I have no idea. She's the first Hornet Day to go straight, so whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we called her Chacha Hornet Day, and her, and her name of her Dragster fits her well. Absolute all attitude was the name of the, the dragster. <laughs> so uh, she was, I mean, my son was racing at 14 up at the Anal Valley Fairgrounds and she was drag racing the same day and she ended up winning her brackets. So she came with her trophy and her fire suit and my son won that night. So it was really cool to, to see both of them win at one time and I uh, had a lot of good friends helping them out. You got to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's so many visually stimulating things in here. It's hard to like yeah, pick yeah. one question. Well, <laughs> the, the coolest part on some of this stuff is like this helmet and this helmet and this VFW. When my wife had a graphic store, she wrapped them. So she actually wrapped them and sealed them and everything. So huh. it's pretty awesome. And, and the detail in this one is just incredible with all the men and women on there. Had dog tags when I went to Iraq and BFW. So that's the vinyl with a clear coat over it? Yep, vinyl with a clear coat. Interesting. And she, uh, 
you know, a lot of people don't know it. I'm gonna point this out. Um, I won a lot of races and from the Saturday night shows in California from when I first started racing. All my wins have been in a Chevrolet. I've never drove anything else. We put a Ford body on our car and lasted two races and we took it off because I just didn't, yeah. didn't finish right. But my dad did work for Gotham Ford for 50 years, so why didn't they help us out? Huh. 75th deal is pretty cool. What NASCAR's done for you and everything. And it'll give you a stopwatch and if you read it, it's pretty unbelievable. We got most of the, most of the boys and what's still alive for the top 75 drivers. And then Darlington gave us a nice, it looks like a big old diamond, but it's not. <laughs> it is a diamond. That's probably one of the prestigious. Getting in the Hall of Fame is really cool, but you know, when you're racing, you didn't think you were going to go out there and be in the Hall of Fame. You know, and then all of a sudden you get elected in it. And I didn't, that's cool. I did my job. I put food on the table. But um, Mark Martin said, you don't realize what this means until you get inducted, go home and think about this. And just all of the people that you touched and what you've done. So it's pretty cool. I told Jimmy because he got inducted. I said, hey, you, you won't believe the people that really helped you in your career and come along. And they start thinking about from when you were 10 years old, that little kid gave you a, a spare tire for your bicycle and you were racing or stuff like that. And that, it's, it's pretty cool to, to see how your whole life comes along to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, for me growing up, you were like of the, the era when I was, you know, starting to understand the world and watch racing and right. get into it. I liked the trucks more than anything else. And you were like a staple of that. Yeah, that we, we had a handful of us that really, you know, did it. But um, I guess you can say we were trying to make a name for ourselves out here because the truck series just started in 95. And, uh, you know, Jack Sprague won a lot of championships and races out here. And Mike Skinner won some out in California and out here. And he, he came out earlier and, and I did. So it's like you're putting a lot of short track drivers. And when NASCAR started the truck series, they weren't going to go over, over a mile. And then they started going to a mile and a half and stuff like that. It's changed a lot of racing with Arrow, but I mean, hell, we would beat and bang and be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Back at that point, the truck series wasn't considered like a development driver series. No. It was, yeah. It was I mean, like we had we probably had a lot of retired guys coming out of retirement to drive them. Um, you know, Joe Rutman, he wasn't no young pup, but he showed showed us. You know, I didn't start truck series until I was 35 and uh, the 30, 32 car, no, 43 cars started the race and we would be on a half mile racetrack and we'd send seven or eight trucks home now. So they're down to what, 36 now. So mm -hmm. it was all different back there. This is pretty cool. Other than this fire suit, there's so much stitching in this fire suit. It was really, really hot. <laughs> and I don't have a picture of it, but I got a picture of that. Can't get it out. No kidding. I, I didn't even notice that. That is insane. Yeah, that's that's. I I don't know the number of how many. And then that's pretty cool. A buddy of mine painted all this for us, Eric. That's awesome. Yeah. I never put my name on anything, so some of my fire suits you won't see my name on there, other than when they're trophies like this. I've always felt that. If people walk around and go like this and have to look at your name on your fire suit, you didn't do your job on a racetrack. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. That's cool that it's an open face helmet. Never really and That's all we ever wore until NASCAR made you start wearing. See, on some stuff I see the junior, some stuff I don't. Which which one are you partial? Which what? What do you mean? Like when people refer to you, do you like to be referred to as Ron Hornaday Jr. or just Ron Hornaday? Just Ron Hornaday. I mean. Um, I guess NASCAR said when your your dad passes on that you drop the junior. And the stupidest thing I ever done is name my son the third. So his his insurance went up one year and my insurance went up one year. We couldn't figure out why. Well, my dad got in an accident <laughs> and hit two parked cars, yeah. fell asleep at the wheel, and we ended up. So naming your sons or your family members after you exactly the same as just adding a junior or a third. I recommend don't do it. it, just, it whittle, everything whittles down. So my son just called me this morning and said, "Hey, Dad, uh, did you use my credit card? Somebody put twelve hundred dollars in my credit card." So, but interesting. The, the biggest deal my wife and I had made when we got married. We've been married forty-five years now. She said, uh, 
You'll never race an open wheel car. And if you know when I made my success with Earnhardt was with Fred Graves. Well, Fred Graves came from open wheel modifieds. And this is a faded picture. My son and I went up to an exhibition race and we were helping him, you know, get the class going and everything. We raced it. I got an opportunity to run that thing in practice just to run 10, 15 laps in it. Unbelievable. Now I know why she won't let me drive them. They're fast. <laughs> <laughs> The wait is over, North Carolina. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is officially live in the Tar Heel State. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you bet your first five bucks. Just go to fanduel.com slash stapleton to sign up. Then you can bet on everything from college hoops to NASCAR and everything in between. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Get started with $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 bet. Visit fanduel.com slash stapleton to get started. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 21 plus in present North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. So when you started driving trucks for Dale, mm -hmm. how did that come about? Like, how did you get approached? We, uh, Tucson Raceway Park put on the races right, right around New Year's, Christmas time, where everybody sat at home and all that stuff. So we'd race, I think it was 13 weeks every Saturday night. And we'd go down there and, and do that, and it was televised. That's when Buddy Baker was doing all the stuff and everything. So, um, just fortunate enough to get that phone call from Dale. and. Uh, he said, you want to drive my truck? We're good, you know, the, the track the truck series. And I was fortunate enough to Wayne, race for Wayne and Connie Spears, and they built the truck for the six exhibition races. And I asked Wayne if he was gonna run the whole deal. And he goes, no, we're just gonna run the Winston West stuff. So I ended up taking the job with Dale. Glad I did. And then Wayne got mad and started running a full-time truck deal for the next seven years. Oh, man. <laughs> so it always, it always spruces everybody up, so. Um, yeah, just fortunate that you spent every penny we ever had to go down there and just got that phone call from Dale. What are you thinking? I'm trying to think of something to think of. There's still, I'm <laughs> still is, this absorbing is the everything the championship for Harvick, one of the first ones. He won the race and I ended up winning the championship. Were you friends with Kevin when he was racing yes. for Spears? Yeah, Kevin and I raced against each other. We always called him the kid. He was 16 years old racing at Mason Marin. And he was never 16. He was, I think he was 15, but they kept calling the kid every week because he never grew up. He's always that baby face kid. <laughs> and um, yeah, he actually, when he moved out here and I actually put the deal together with him and Richard, just calling Richard. Richard called me and said, hey, Kevin's got a contract. I can't talk to him. Can you talk to him for me? And by that time, he was sleeping on my couch. And when you sleep on our couch in a big house, and that's part of the couch too. <laughs> that, that right yeah, there. That's the couch Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick totally slept on, and they were just too drunk to go upstairs to go to bed. So <laughs> they're in the game room. Um, Kevin ended up buying a house down the street. Jimmy stayed with us for six, eight months, and Lindy found him a house over here. So instead of them renting a house, wasting their money, I just told them to save it and put a down payment on a house, and it worked out for both of them. Well, that's cool. You were kind of like a the billet family yeah. for those guys then. Yep. Yep. Was that part of like uh, your mindset of like paying it back to the, the younger guys? No, I just enjoy it. I mean, I, I can't think of anything else. Like this guy's doing my shower inside and I'm trying to get excited about it to help him. I don't want to. I'd rather <laughs> go down and work on this race car. I'll show you here in a minute. But um, I just like welding. I mean, the thing about doing work in your house, when you cut a two by four too short, you gotta get another one. Mm -hmm. When you cut a piece of metal too short, you can like weld onto it and make mm -hmm. it longer. Yeah. yeah. So you can fix it. So wood guys will say, well, you put glue and you put this wedge in there. I don't understand it, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I made my living by welding and building race cars. Yeah, that's really cool that you used to build your own race cars back in the day. We did, yeah. We had Victory Circle race cars. And I think our biggest claim is uh, going to Phoenix, Arizona. 36 cars started the field and 27 cars that we built at Victory Circles started that race. Wow. Do you ever like go back home to California to where, no, where you grew up? No, that's not California no more for what I can see. Mm -hmm. It's really changed a lot. Um, we go back to Atlanta and Lewis, race a couple races here at Portland and Monroe and Sears Point, but actually 
back in my hometown, drove through there and said hey, hi to everybody and pulled out. Pretty cool that they named the street after me out there. Huh? And it's not one way either. It's actually Ron Hornaday Jr. Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, a lot of streets are named one way and they said it was me, but no. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. This is your drag racer, right? No, that's uh, my granddaughter. That's your One of my granddaughters, right? Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's my. Yeah, she's in the second picture down there. My daughter. In the middle. Oh, this is probably this is probably the best one. This is a drag racer, and Ronnie, when he was racing, and she was drag racing. That's what age they were. Yep. Did anybody give her a hard time for being interested in drag racing? No, no. Kept the car for a long time. It really cost me a lot of money because she said it was really boring. You know, it was, it was bracket racing. She'd get on it and other other drags were spinning the tires and hers wasn't. So I talked to a buddy of mine and he rebuilt the motor. It was $10,000 for a little Brig and Stratton five horsepower motor. <laughs> but she done burnouts. <laughs> wow. Uh, we had to watch that. It's interesting how many women uh, make really good drag racers because they're good with reaction times. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> then Lindy with all her dogs just go to racetrack. Our shih tzus. Oh yeah, I grew up with those. Oh yeah. It must have taken a lot of time to put all these up here and paste no. all these to the ceiling. She did it in two nights. Wow. But then. I've never seen anybody do something like this. It's what really else cool. are you going to do with them? Yeah, I mean. Put them in a, you know. Yeah. You go into a scrapbook that you look at a couple yeah. times a year, maybe. Yeah. Or when somebody like us comes around and is like, hey, do you have a cool scrapbook with stuff in it? And they knock the dust I'm off. I'm going to go, we'll go, we'll head downstairs. And I'll go get a book about that car that I built for Travis. It's pretty cool. Yeah, let's check that out. We use them for the video. So this car was my first first championship. So a lot of people don't know that I've got seven championships. I got one in this at Pop Cobans, and I've got two in Southwest Tour, which is all NASCAR sanction deal, and then foreign trucks. What was the origin of the 79 or 97? I see that in a lot of places. 79 was John Colvin. I used to race against him and he started a business. He couldn't run it. 97 was my dad's number and I've always ran 97. Um, so it was a coincidence that you drove 97 backwards? Yeah, it was. And huh. then won the championship for him. Huh. All the years we tried in ours. Can you turn that light off? That would be nice. <laughs> the glare makes it kind of hard. Hold on, I gotta find where I put it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool. Jim Manning, he's a preacher with us. He goes yeah. to the truck series and everything and gives you that little prayer before you take off. Man, that, I'm going to fix this floor. She's a little soft right here. These little elbows brought trophies. They're about 70 pounds. <laughs> I can't even pick it up. Is it made out of like solid metal? It's some kind of billet something. <laughs> then I got my first credit card with Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. And then uh, my rent a car one with them. And then Lady keeps all of our hard cards. Those are all hers. And then you can see all these, all the hard cards, all the years of racing. Yeah. We've got more. <laughs> I was like, that can't be all of them. <laughs> so back in the day, they didn't have die casts, so Lindy would paint these up and give them to the kids at the racetrack. This is my Winston West car. So she had hand painted all that. Oh She's very artistic, I see. Well, she painted on fingernails and made a lot of money. She bought a motor for me, painting on fingernails at night after her job. Who came up with the designs for your helmet paint? A couple of my, like, but that one, this one, that one, this is a buddy of mine that did them. And he just do them because he showed me half price. I didn't really ask about them. 
So she's like, hey, here you go. That, oh, that looks cool. Yeah, I'll wear yeah. it. Yeah. The only thing you got to worry about is getting the sponsor's name on there the right way. Do you have a favorite paint scheme? Hard. <laughs> well, with Kevin's, with a lot of neat Like I said, the BFW is pretty, excuse me, pretty cool because they've done a lot of stuff at the racetrack with a lot of military. But I mean, Tide, a lot of people ran Tide, but the I think mine was cool. a bad. Yeah, <laughs> mine was pretty cool at Martinsville. Um, Longhorn is probably my favorite sponsor. What they've done, just how they understood racing and no pressure if we did good or bad. Just That's nice. As long as you treat the people with respect and whatever they bring. So. <clears throat> What's the thumbs down for in this picture? I was, I was uh, 40 and I won Bristol. My birthday was that day. Oh, <laughs> oh is that why they're all wearing hats and say yeah. 40 on them? Yep. It was my 40th birthday and I ended up winning one because <laughs> I'm getting old. So I am a preacher too. <laughs> wow, you're ordained and everything. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to marry my granddaughter in October. <laughs> they asked me to. Did you just fill out the thing online or? Yeah, <laughs> they did. I didn't do anything. So you got to hang out with Kiss? Yeah, that, I mean. What was that like? <laughs> unbelievable. They're, they're showing. So it's like, wow, look at all the cars here already. You know, we're, we're getting through tech and all that stuff. Well, he's in there and just people are, he, he signed probably 5,000 people to Kisses. And all of a sudden he was ready to leave and it's like, no, there's no more fans. They all came to see Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty cool. So anybody wants to buy a fire suit, I got the helmet, I got the thing, I got the t-shirt signed from them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Was Gene Simmons a big character? Yeah, he's pretty cool. I can't say the stuff I've seen on film. Uh -oh. <laughs> a note from your daughter. Yeah. What happened to Missed. your toe? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> it says, remember your toe does work. She was younger and she had to paint my toenail. And every time she painted my toenail, I won two races in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it works because we got another little driver that his girlfriend paints on his toenail and he won. So, I don't know what it is. So, when your little, when your little girls are trying to be little girls, let them paint your toenails because it's good luck sometimes. <laughs> That's good to know. You play the guitar? No. <laughs> I don't even know what the one this is. Nashville, isn't it? Yep, Nashville. I didn't break mine like uh, Kyle Bush did. I kept mine. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought when I saw that. Yep. But I thought he like replaced it and bought Yeah, he, he, he came out of it pretty good saying that he broke it to get a piece of all his crew members. Yeah, I thought, I thought yeah. that he like bought all, all of his crew members a new one. He too. kind of poured it back then. <laughs> Sam Bass designed all those and Sam's not with us no more. There you go. This one's tuned. Mike Skinner tuned this one for me. <laughs> Does he play guitar? No, I can't play it. Mike plays it really well. Didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. That's all I know. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, Mike Skinner's really good at it. He sang with a lot of big influential singers. What? I had no idea. I had no idea he sang or played guitar. Well, no, he sounds better when he's drunk because he, he hears himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I got 102 fire suits in the house, but they're all stacked in a closet. Jeez. I was just going to ask you if you kept the the spiky good wrench one. Yep. That's like the coolest. Yeah. I got one of every, every one I drove because I usually get two for one for practice and one for the race. Huh. Well, this is my son's car I was telling you about. I got it down there still. After 23 years, I still have a car. Oh, wow. And we ran, we ran uh, Wilkesboro with it last last year. So I'll tell you that story when we get down there. Yeah, I was wondering if you had any old cars, because when you asked you what you had, you're like, we got it all. So let me tell you a quick story. A buddy of mine came by. I only knew him as being a sheriff. His name's Travis Hansen. He came to me and said, hey, Ron, Wilkesboro, Dale Jr. got involved with Wilkesboro and they're going to have a street stock race there. I said, yeah. He said, will you build me a car? I said, sure. I said, what do you want? He said, a Camaro. Well, he'll show you a book that he made for me. We went out back and I had my son's Camaro when he was 15 years old racing. And uh, we pulled it out of the woods. 
So this picture was taken about five, 10 years before we actually pulled it out of the woods. It, it, this is actually a good picture of it because it looked a little bit worse than that. <laughs> so when we first got it out of the woods, the first day, this is kind of it. We basically peeled everything off and pulled a few years of trees out and leaves and all that kind of stuff. And then sent it off to sandblast and then kind of got started going with it. And it was, uh, we, we didn't have a long time to do it. We had about, we had about six weeks to get it done before we went up, but we kind of went through and, and took a 30 year old race car cause it's 30 years old and competed with guys with, you know, brand new pieces of equipment. The final paint scheme, we kind of used this picture as kind of an homage to, to Mark Martin. That's awesome. Um, so he's got orange there and, and a blue stripe and we did blue and white with an orange stripe just to kind of replicate that a little bit. Um, all of my old cars used to always be white with blue lettering and everything. There's just a lot of pictures of stuff that don't mean anything to anybody else. But for myself, having Ron as a friend and just having the opportunity to come work in a shop and learn, you, you try to document as much of it as we can. So we went through, um, this is the day that it actually went off to get painted. Jimmy Fallon, great guy, that's Jimmy. He passed away last year, uh, pulled it in the shop and then four or five hours had it looking like that. He was in the military. It's yeah. Travis was in the military where we got to know him real well, helped him out a bunch. Yeah. And he helped us out. So there's the orange. So kind of just a, a reverse of, of what Martin's car was like. And Ron sent pictures to him and he thought it was kind of cool. And it just, just kind of went, went from there. Um, started throwing some of the decals on there, different people that helped out. The amount of people that helped out with this car, just providing everything was, was just insane. Yep. But let's just show you the end results of why. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe we ain't got any. You got any pictures of the end no, results? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Oh. No. No. Should be one more page. Nope. No, you gotta go to this one. So the car you see in the background, you first seen me. This is this is how he started it. He said, Ron, there's our next race car. He wants his own race car. So that's how that car started. If you go through this book real real quickly, there's a this little captions him saying a race and that and that and whatever. And that's how it started right there. So then we started putting it together. And that's kind of, we were too cheap to sandblast the frame before we started. Yeah. And then if you really notice the blue on this thing, Buck Stevens, a buddy of ours painted it, made it look brand new. What frame is that that you start with? That's a metric frame, 72 to- 78 Monte Carlo. Huh. How come we ain't got no pictures of- The one that says Harvard, that's what you saw my phone. Yeah. So that's all Kevin Harvick's. We used the quarter panel, the roof and the hood off Kevin Harvick's car back in the day of the early 90s. There's the end result. Now, as you see it, little Keelan, we've been testing him for two times. Little Keelan Harvick, he's gonna race it at Ace this coming, not this coming weekend, because it's tomorrow, the following weekend. So we're getting it ready and go from there. That's so cool. <laughs> Never stop. I never do. Oh, you gotta cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> did you do, uh, did you do Donnie Allison? No, I, I actually got his phone number at Stocks for Tots and I haven't called him yet to do a video. Better do it, he's getting pretty old and forgetful. Yeah, we've been going real hard on the older guys lately because you never know when they're not gonna be there anymore. Older guys, buddy. That's why he's here. Oh, you're like the youngest guy we've talked to lately. Yeah. Everybody else is like 85 or 90. Yeah. I'm right there. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're a lot easier to edit. You talk loud and you, and you don't uh, have I to don't sound sit and good, think. Yeah. So, I mean, you can kind of shoot that one and then go on the trophies and say, hey, you know, I was building dirt cars here. Now everybody's at. Like the Legends cars? Was that what you were doing? Or Modified. Okay. How long have you been building stuff in this particular shop? Uh, a long time. Uh, this this Bobby shop's been here 20 years. My father-in-law lived up at the house. In the shop probably 20, 22 years. Just from street cars to a 52 five window Ford that we're gonna put together for Billy Workman. And those trophies you see up there, there's just a couple of the dirt cars I used to build. Chris Parker, my grandson Slater, and Billy Workman. 
So these were dirt cars. I, I built probably 22 of them and was getting kind of tired from every night, every Monday morning, everybody complaining. And then my, my daughter and Billy would go up there and work on them and they go out and win the race. And next week, they didn't run that good and they blame me. So I'm getting kind of tired of dirt cars. So I helped Travis out building back the asphalt when I really know. Yeah, this thing's awesome. You got a video of these. This is this is right in the bathroom. Go in the bathroom. Oh, then you're taking a. Sh <laughs> then you're taking a sh My fault. My dad, her dad, my son, me. And my very first race car at Saga Speedway. And would you do choose to hang these here while you're taking a dump, or what? What? Well, I have no other walls really open outside the shop because they're all steel. This is the only one I found. <laughs> that is my very first motorcycle. The old CZ250. Is that the same Galpin as the Pit My Ride yes. place? Yes. That's funny. This is where my father law worked. Uh, my father worked there for 51 years. My very first race car I bought. And I finished the year out because I won the championship with Hot Cold Band. I finished the year out with him and then I. Put it over to this, this one. There's a whole side of a truck over here. Yeah. What's the backstory of this thing? Uh, I think I went wild in New Hampshire. The whole right side was torn off. And the way they cut it, I just wanted to keep it. Is the only, um, Napa truck in its original form, the one that they have sitting up at DEI? Yes. If they still have it. I don't know what Teresa's done with Wallace and stuff. Because they'll kept them on. It's, it, still it's still back there. They still have original floor pans in there. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I built that truck, too. There was my fall off truck sitting out behind the... Yeah, this is... Like, oh, I always want a little Chevy Love because he did exhaust work. And he bought all the parts to put a Chevy, a big block, a small block Chevy in a Chevy Love. So this was sitting out there and he ended up passing. And I was going to put the scrap yard. My wife says, you got to build it for my dad. You know, my dad wanted it built. And I said, well, everything's rusted on it. So I had to put floor pans in it, firewall, everything else. The best part about it, I got the horn worked, all the lights work, street legal, and it's dusty. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's interesting that there's a lot of, race guys who never worked on street cars or like tinker with hot rods that's that's pretty interesting that some people are that specialized that's where we come in with landon little landon Lewis. i keep saying his name because he came to us he's won a lot of go-kart races been racing go-karts since he was four years old with his dad and everything else and his dad seen us race up there at devlin speedway pretty close to our house and one day he showed up down here on a wednesday and he said, hey, my son's done this and this. What do I do with him next? And I said, well, I have a dirt car here. Let's go put him in it. And we did. And about the third or fourth race, he passed my driver, Billy Workman, on the outside. Against the fence and everything. So I said, this kid's got a lot of talent. So we just took him under our wing and, and just dirt raced with him and ran a couple of ARCA races. Or I should say a whole full season of ARCA racing. They ended up winning the owner's championship. He didn't finish the last four races. But, yeah. Jump in there. These hurt your back after a while? I only drove it about 20 miles. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I just like doing it. I built the Chevelle from the ground up, and I built the 66 Charger. I built, you know. So you're an all around car guy. I just like working on them. Yeah, this wasn't pre stamped metal to make the floor no. pans or firewall or anything. He made it from like, scratch. Yeah. Got a tubing bend at all. I learned a lot of it working for my father while doing exhaust. You know, a muffler shop out in. California. Look at this inner console he made. Oh, wow. Your dimple like, dies and everything. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> and once it gets warm, it idles and everything, but all the yeah. gauges work, lights work, horn. Tilt wheel, pretty happy with it. That's awesome. Look at the blinkers up front. Do you see the little dinky little blinkers? Your wife doesn't want to drive it? No. 
<laughs> I scared her the first time because I pulled out and did a burnout all the way down the street. Well, yep, I'm right riding with you in that thing. This is her dad's shop back in the day in Newhall, California. She put a stencil on there and painted it. When you think about the hardened veterans that made the truck series awesome in the mid 2000s, or really from the time it started until um, an indefinite amount of time ago that I'll let you decide when that was. But Ron is that guy. He's exactly what you would hope one of those guys would be like. He works on race cars every day. I mean, you look at his hands, they're, they're all beat up from cutting and welding and grinding things. Like he's, he's a racer through and through. And he puts a lot of effort into um, helping the grassroots stuff too. And after we're done filming, we got to talking to him about my car here that I'm running in Grand National Super Series. And he actually offered to come over here and help me mount my seat. So maybe we'll do that. That'd be pretty cool. You'll be able to see this on the channel coming up. I'm kind of stockpiling the footage. And then when you see the progression of it, it will be quickly to follow instead of having a video here, video there, and having it real spaced out. I want it to be, you know, have a nice flow to it. If you want to support the channel and what we do, you can go to stableandautoworks.com. Actually, you don't even have to do that. You can just hit thumbs up on this video and leave a comment. I try to answer as many as I can. The more you interact with things on the, the videos, like leaving thumbs up comments or a thumbs up on comments, that helps YouTube know that you enjoyed what you just watched and it will show you our uploads more frequently. Because I'd be willing to bet there are a lot of videos we have posted that you would really enjoy watching that you have not even seen yet. You know what, I'll test you. Go back on an older video and leave a comment and say you came from this one, see if I answer you. See how diligent I really am. She's like, this is still a stock floor paint. Yeah. <laughs> you never see that anymore. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a true street stock. And this yeah. one is too. Yeah. Um, Underneath of it, half of the, so down the center of the transmission tunnel to the driver door, that's all stock. Stock firewall, paint. stock bat, stock yeah. chassis other than behind the rear tires. And most of the guys that have now cut them off way earlier than we did here, there's no arguing. That is 1,000% of stock chassis. So what class is that? The street stock. Oh, oh, that's a street, street stock. stock. People kind of get tripped out because of the body on it, but the street stock bodies that Five Star sells now. Uh, yeah. I think this is cooler. It actually looks like a 90s Monte Carlo. It's yeah. not all squished and stretched. And yeah. Well, I mean, you ain't gonna do nothing. For a week or two to put this out right no yeah is there like a release date of this yes okay yes please that's good, that's good to know 